Good day, class. Our topic for today has something to do still with the human respiratory system. But the main focus for today's discussion has something to do with mechanics of breathing. And here are the learning objectives for today's topic. First, explain how the lungs work. Second, describe how the movement of the diaphragm helps the air go in and out of the lungs. And third, discuss gaseous exchange in alveoli. But before we go through to the deeper discussion, let's have this think about it question. And the question is, what effect does exercise training have on the respiratory system? So same procedure, don't be in a hurry answering this question. What I want you to do for the meantime is for you to remember this question because this question will be answered using the concepts that I'm going to discuss later. Again, don't forget this think about it question. Now, from what you have learned last time in our discussion, we know that respiratory system is an integrated system of organs which mainly functions for intake and exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the body and the environment. So as what I mentioned last time, this is more about gaseous exchange. And also, this organ system includes organs like nasal passages, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchial tubes, and the lungs. Now, in this particular discussion, there are two questions that we have to answer. First question is, how lungs work? Because we know for a fact that lungs are the major organs for respiration. And the second question is, how does gaseous exchange take place in the site of respiration, which is the alveoli? So, those two questions will be answered as we move forward to the different concepts. So, remember that questions because that will give us the idea about the flow of my discussion. Now, for us to answer the first question, which is how lungs work, we have to look on the anatomical parts of it. And likewise, we have to see how lungs really function well in terms of the respiration process. Now, let's have this illustration. And let's try to describe the parts of it. So from what you've noticed and using my cursor so that everyone is properly guided, we can actually see that this organ is fairly large organs, right? Now, aside from that, this organ occupies entirely the chest cavity or the thoracic cavity and being protected also by a ribcage. Also, you have to note that on this part, this one, which is the superior part of the lungs, we call this as apex. Now, the inferior part, the one I'm pointing here in my end, we call this as base. And the base of the lungs are rested on a muscle known to be diaphragm. Another thing, lungs are divided into two parts, which are the right lung and the left lung. What makes them different? Right lung, as you've noticed here, it has three lobes. And the reason why there are lobes simply because of this fissure. So, there are three lobes. While on the left lung, you've noticed that there are only two lobes. This one and the other one. Also, bear in your mind that right lung is shorter than the left lung. And the reason behind it is that liver is found underneath 
the right lung, which is here in this space. Another thing you have to be mindful that left lung, aside from longer than the right lung, this is narrowed. This is very narrow compared to the right lung because of the heart. Heart is or uh, located in this space. And also, lungs are being protected by this covering, which is known to be pulmonary pleura. And this pulmonary pleura secretes pleural fluid, which lessen the effect of friction once lungs expand during respiration process. Also, we can actually notice from the illustration that inside the lungs, we can see branch-like structures from what you've learned last time. We call it as bronchioles. And at the end of bronchioles, we can actually see the site for respiration or the site for gaseous exchange in particular, which are known to be alveoli. So therefore, we can really say lungs are really indeed the major organ for respiration. Now, to answer our question, how lungs work, let's take a look and study this concept, which is breathing. Now, breathing are collective term for two processes. These processes are being explained by this illustration. The inhalation, this one, and the exhalation, the other side of this illustration. The one I'm pointing here in my head. So in the other reference materials, other biology books, you would see that breathing, the other term for that is pulmonary ventilation. So what I want you to bear in your mind is that breathing and pulmonary ventilation are two common terms, which means to say the, uh, these two terms are same, in terms of functionality. Now, let's generalize everything in terms of breathing. Breathing means uh, the process. This is just a, a process or uh, known to be a complete mechanical process that depends on volume changes uh, happening when happening in the chest cavity. So again. Breathing is a completely mechanical process that purely depends on volume changes happening in the chest cavity. So, uh, I would like to define this quantity, which is volume. Volume is the space occupied by a given matter. Now, other than volume, you ha we have also to consider pressure as another quantity here in breathing process whether we're, we are talking about inhalation or exhalation pressure means the force applied in a given area okay now in this case in breathing for us to really understand this both two processes inhalation and exhalation we have to look on the relationship of volume and pressure but as a hands, uh, as a heads up remember that volume changes lead to pressure changes which also lead to the flow of gases to equalize the pressure which means to say that if volume changes will definitely it will affect the pressure of gas that goes inside the lungs. Air is an example of gas. Now, here, to give you the real relationship between volume and pressure, the two of them, in terms of relationship, they are both inversely proportional to one another. Which means to say, if volume increases, pressure decreases. Now, if volume decreases, pressure 
increases. So that means the other way around. Now, let's focus first on inspiration and let's go back and assess assess the volume and pressure relationship as air moves in. Now, what we know in general, inspiration, uh, this is just movement of air from the environment going to the lungs. So, air moves in. So, it will go to the other organs for respiration until such time that it will move directly to the lungs. Now, in this case, diaphragm, this one, I'm pointing here in my end, as well as the external intercostal muscles, these muscles are found between the ribcage here. So, what happened there uh, on them as air moves in, they tend to expand. Okay, uh, they tend to expand or contract in particular. So, rib cage expands, uh, diaphragm contracts, going downward as air fills the lungs. So, as air goes inside the lungs, what will happen to the lungs? It expands. Okay, so the lungs expand. So here, in this case, if we're going to check volume. And pressure relationship as air moves in volume of the lungs sabi natin kasi volume is the space occupied so if air goes inside the lungs automatically it will expand making the volume increases now as vol as the lungs expand ribcage expands as well so the ribcage or the thoracic cavity the volume of it increases as well. Now, what happened to the pressure of the the air inside the lungs? So, the pressure there decreases because when we say pressure, that is the force applied by, I mean, force applied in a given particles. So, what I want you to, I mean, imagine here is that we know from your grade 8 science that gas particles are very far away from each other. So when you expand the, the, the space occupied by those particles, well, definitely the pressure there decreases because of the volume. Okay? Now, again, to clear things up, in inspiration or inhalation, diaphragm and intercostal muscles contract so volume of lungs and ribcage increases as air goes inside while the pressure decreases okay? because the force between one particle to another is not that strong okay as compared to the one with uh the one with uh, lower volume because if you have lower volume automatically gas particles are nearly uh, to each other and then they can apply force from one another they can bump to each other then will lead to uh, increase in pressure now in this case sabi ni sir volume is high for lungs and ribcage uh, pressure decreases for the air inside the lungs so to equalize that kasi pag hindi na equalize what will happen to your lungs it will collapse so uh, to equalize that more air goes in the lungs so that pressure will not really become uh, lesser and lesser okay hopefully that concept is clear to everyone now in terms of exhalation process or uh, uh, I mean expiration in the other term so here automatically the counterpart of inspiration air moves out from the lungs so in this case diaphragm here and the external intercostal muscles and also the rib cage. What happened to them? They tend to relax. So they relax. Uh, both of them relaxes. Okay. So they relax. Now, until such time that they go back to initial resting condition. 
So, kaya nag-relax sila when you uh, expelled out air from the lungs. Now, lungs compress. Lungs compress. So, compare it to the one that expands, uh, lungs tend to become smaller in terms of its size. Now, if we're going to assess volume pressure relationship from that concept, volume there decreases for lungs and ribcage. Now, the pressure of air inside the lungs increases because of smaller volume. That allows one particle to easily bump to each other. So, force is very evident there. Now, hindi dapat laging ganon. Because what will happen still, it will uh, collapse. Lungs will tend to collapse. So, we have to equalize them. Now, to equalize it, more air tends to go out from the lungs. So, in order to equalize uh, the, the process for exhalation. Now, here, mga anak, you have to remember in this breathing process that there are major players. There are muscles that could actually help the process. These are the diaphragm here. That is a muscle that actually contracts downward or relaxes upward depending on the type of process we are trying to discuss. Now, other than that, Okay, ribcage is also an important factor for for the breathing process. Okay, so again, volume and pressure must be equalized here in order for the lungs not to collapse. Now, to answer the second question, which is how does a gaseous exchange take place in the alveoli? Let's go ahead and look on this illustration. So again, we're clear that the site for gaseous exchange is at the alveoli. Now, in this case, let's take a look on this illustration. What I want you to provide here is that the, the process for gaseous exchange is just simple diffusion. So in terms of its structure, as mentioned last, last time, uh, your alveoli or th this one, your alveolus, Okay, is covered with capillary. Okay, covered with capillary. So you will learn more about capillaries as we move to circulatory system. And this is a type of blood vessel. And this blood vessel is found on the surface, external surface of your alveolus. So this is a single cell wall. Uh, blood vessel and also alveol uh, alveolus or the alveoli uh, there are single uh, celled wall so the reason why they are single celled wall to easily facilitate gaseous exchange so as mentioned this is purely simple diffusion we're in okay from what you've learned in grade 8 simple diffusion is just more about difference in concentration gradient right so dapat uh, air one area is high in concentration compared to another area so this is more about movement of substances from higher going to lower now when we put that concept in this con uh, topic in this illustration for gaseous exchange in this alveolus okay so blood the one uh, represented by blue colors okay this uh, blood cells represented in terms of color blue rather uh, are known to be deoxygenated which means to say they lack oxygen attached to this uh, blood cells now kaya sila blue now in this case they carry carbon dioxide right now when they carry carbon dioxide the air that we inhale or the air that we allow to enter the respiratory system so it carries oxygen right sinabi ni sir last time in our previous discussion now the oxygen from the air is being collected at this point at this alveolus or the alveoli now what will happen here 
the air is rich in oxygen. Now, to make the oxygenated blood into oxygenated one, which means to say, it carries now, no? it carries na uh, oxygen, meaning rich na ng oxygen itong blood cells. Now, to make that happen, using simple diffusion, moving from higher concentration to lower concentration, the car... The, the carbon dioxide uh, being carried by this deoxygenated blood will eventually move to this area with lower concentration of carbon dioxide. Now, this area is rich with oxygen. What will happen is also the same. So, they just simply exchange gases here. So, the, re- the, the oxygen will definitely attach to these bl- uh, blood cells. Okay, this blood cell. Uh, I'm not particular with the, the blood cell here. So, as we move to circulatory system, sasabihin na ni sir, what is that blood cell that carries the oxygen? Now, ulitin lang ni sir, in this part, simple diffusion, the blue color here, uh, blood cells in blue color, they carry more carbon dioxide. So, the carbon dioxide will eventually move to this area with low carbon dioxide concentration. Now, the oxygen from this side will eventually move to an area with lower concentration of oxygen. Now, the oxygen will automatically be attached to these blood cells and that's the time that it will become a red no a red in color or red in color so we can call that na as oxygenated blood which means to say it carries na oxygen the blood carries oxygen so to simplify everything here alveoli site for gaseous exchange the process is simple diffusion so there should be difference in concentration gradient one must be higher in terms of a particular concentration of gas and that uh, gas will eventually move from higher to lower okay the gas that we're talking here are carbon dioxide and oxygen so in this case also uh, removal of waste material in a form of carbon dioxide is easily be uh, easily happening. No? So automatically it will uh, expelled out in this alveoli, in this alveolus rather, it will move going out of the body. The, the important thing here is that oxygen must be properly supplied. Kaya nga we keep on breathing and breathing and breathing. Okay, to to get oxygen to collect more oxygen okay so hopefully everything is clear in this particular part of my slide and to sum it up everything in this discussion respiration is a collective term for different processes one is pulmonary ventilation, which is breathing. In layman's term, this is movement of air into and out of the lungs. Uh, I explained that earlier. Another process under respiration is external respiration, wherein movement of oxygen from the lungs to the blood and carbon dioxide from the blood to the lungs. So in this case, this will be further intensified soon as we discuss the interrelationship of the two systems, circulatory and respiratory system. Now, another fa- uh, another process for respiration is transport of respiratory gases, wherein it says that transport of oxygen from the lungs to the tissues and carbon dioxide from the tissues to the lungs. Okay, so from a uh, bigger perspective moving to a simpler uh, perspective now last process under respiration is internal respiration which says that movement of oxygen from blood to the tissue cells and carbon dioxide from tissue cells to blood again from uh, general going to 
simplified understanding of the whole process for respiration. Okay, and again, this will be further intensified as we move, as we jump to the other topics. So, pulmonary ventilation is just breathing. External respiration is more about uh, movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide from blood. And this happens in, uh, at uh, alveoli, right? Now, transfer of respiratory gases, that's the time that it will move na to, uh, to the different tissues. Okay? And carbon dioxide will eventually move uh, from tissues going to lungs. And external respiration, this is more about movement of oxygen from blood to the tissue cells, carbon dioxide from tissue cells going to blood. So, respiration is not just a breathing process. It, respiration is a collective form for other processes. Going back to this think about it question, as mentioned last time, uh, as mentioned at the beginning of this video recorded discussion, this will be answered through the help of the concept discussed. So, what effect does exercise training have on the respiratory system? So, what I want you to do is to provide your explanation, put that on the comment section below, and let's see if you really provide a good explanation or not. And this gives you an additional score for your recitation. Hopefully, you learned something for today, and keep on subscribing, like, and share this video.